We live systematic lives, stuck in a cycle of waking up early, dragging ourselves to school, and grappling with the desire to get out into the real world. We are forced into a system that has turned into a societal norm, and if anyone breaks free from this cycle, they are immediately questioned. Like many of us at SAS, I spent a large part of my life shuffling from one place to another. I've moved from Brooklyn to Dubai and now Singapore. During my journeys, there were two things that helped me stay grounded. My love and passion for basketball and music. I finally adapted to life in Singapore during my middle school years, finding a like-minded community at the basketball courts. Every day during recess for three years, I would play basketball with my friends. On one particular day, I saw my friends wearing an eye-catching pair of sneakers, the Jordan 1 band. This was the day where I was introduced to the world where basketball and music would overlap, sneakers and streetwear. From that day on, my eyes would constantly be glued to people's shoes, and I found myself wishing I could just have a few to myself. And so, on my 13th birthday, I took the birthday money that I received and purchased two pairs of sneakers for a total of $100. That same night, I posted them on my Instagram story, and the next morning I woke up with an offer for $250. This caught me completely off guard, and as you can imagine, a 13-year-old who just decided to sell his 13th birthday present was offered $250 for it. I decided to pursue this reselling journey, and it changed my life completely. Becoming a sneaker reseller has forced me to overcome hardships, take risks, and above all, learn what school and books can't teach me. I've taught myself how to understand the market, take risks, and learn efficient advertisement strategies. And with these skills, I've been able to increase my initial investment upwards of 5,000%. My name is Mikhail Kazmi, and today, I will be talking to you in the hopes of piercing the stigma surrounding entrepreneurship and examining some of the ways our community can better prepare students who are interested in pursuing less traditional career paths. For those of you who don't know, the sneaker industry is made up of three different types of resellers, the first of which is the botter. The botter reseller uses online programs on the day of the release to purchase large quantities of pairs and sells them for more, resulting in a profit. The second is the investor, who purchases large quantities of the same pair with the hopes that they will go up in value over the next few months. And finally, there's me, the classic reseller, who finds cheap pairs and flips them for more, resulting in a profit. Sneaker resellers either purchase pairs as a short-term flip or a long-term investment. Now, before I get more into my talk, I understand most of you listening probably aren't in, into the sneaker market or the sneaker industry, but I assure you, the experiences and lessons that I will talk about today can apply to you regardless of your future ambitions or interests. From the time I sold my 13th birthday present to running my own business, I have found that the main key to my success has been preparation and planning. During my middle school years, I would spend countless of hours watching sneaker YouTube videos, looking at new releases from news sites, and scrolling through Carousel and Facebook Marketplace. Many young entrepreneurs in our day and age often jump to starting their journey before truly understanding what they are getting themselves into and researching. With the time I spent researching, I was able to come up with my own conclusions about the sneaker industry that helped me take calculated risks and maximize my profit. For example, Nike and Adidas dominate the sneaker market despite having clashing business ideologies. The Jordan brand, a subdivision of Nike, aims to satisfy consumers by keeping their high-end products in high demand as well. On the contrary, we have Yeezy, a subdivision of Adidas, whose goal is to satisfy all consumers 
by frequently releasing and restocking new pairs. Due to the oversaturation of the Yeezys in the sneaker market, people may think it's good. But on the contrary, the oversaturation has resulted in the prices of Yeezys and the demand of Yeezys going low in value, and therefore resulted in them being not a good shoe to resell. One of the biggest misconceptions surrounding entrepreneurship is that their success or failure is solely based off of luck. This, however, is completely false. Us entrepreneurs spend hundreds of thousands of hours doing relentless research in order to make the right risks that will maximize our profit. The common image of the entrepreneur as the foolhardy financial daredevil is more often than not a myth. Despite spending hundreds of thousands of hours researching, this does not make us immune to failure. For instance, in May of last year, I was scrolling through Carousel as I do every day and came, a came across a pair of sneakers called the Travis Scott Air Force Ones. For context, these shoes are valued at around $1,300, and I was able to find a pair for $700. As you can imagine, I was over the moon to have found such a nice, valuable pair for such a cheap, affordable price. Not even two days later, I found myself at a random MRT station at 11.30 at night meeting a 20-something-year-old seller. Not suspicious at all. In return for the Travis Scott pairs, I gave him two of my own personal favorites. When I got home, I was filled with joy to have finally snagged such a nice pair of sneakers. And as any teenager would do in the 21st century, took a photo to post on my Snapchat story. As I took the photo, however, I realized something was off. The tiny Nike swoosh on the toe box of the pair was off-centered. My heart dropped. Out of sheer desperation, I texted a friend and a fellow reseller, Benji, for a second opinion. Ten minutes of extreme suspense later, he responded. They're fake. Benji then helped me by giving me different ways of identifying whether sneakers are real or fake, such as the use of a black light flashlight. For those of you who don't know, the black light flashlight enables people to see different stamps that are left on pairs of sneakers. And if your pair happens to have a stamp that is only visible by black lights, it's more often than not fake. One of the biggest misconceptions that's surrounding entrepreneurship is that it is an inherently vicious hunt or be hunted market full of people doing everything in their power to completely get rid of their competition. Now, there is some truth to this, as my story with the Ford sneakers show, but during my time of desperation, it was none other than a fellow reseller who helped me out without getting anything to benefit from it. Now, despite all the financial gains and benefits I have made over my time as a reseller, I feel that there's something more valuable that I've gotten out of it. Spending all this time in the industry, I've created a lot of connections and met a lot of new people. And this community that has been built around the sneaker industry is something that is more valuable than all of the financial gains I've made. Now, I'd be remiss not to mention how my parents initially reacted to my new venture into the sneaker market. Initially, they were skeptical about who I, who I would be meeting and where I would be going. But perhaps most of all, their biggest concern was that I would be losing all of my money due to my inexperience in the industry. This, however, is an example of how the misconceptions I have mentioned above take root. And the sad thing is, it is not only me who is affected, and it is not only tomorrow's entrepreneurs who are affected, rather those who fail to receive work for, fail to receive benefit from what they're worth. Changing this mindset must begin early. And one of the best places to do so is the educational system. SAS has certainly fared better than most schools by introducing courses in niche markets, such as entrepreneurship, that often require a greater deal of problem-solving skills. However, more has to be done. 
Desire exists within all of us, whether it's the hopes of becoming an aeronautical engineer or following the less traditional career path of becoming a sneaker reseller. As a community, it is now our job to push students into traditional career paths based off of their educational level, rather to nurture their spirit of independence that, and make sure that they're able to pursue their hopes and dreams. Thank you.